Three months ago, despite my better judgment, I put liquid metal inside my 2017 MacBook Pro, and by so doing, improved the thermal performance of the laptop by over 15% from the stock thermal paste. That's a lot. And since then, my computer has been both as quiet and as cool as a cucumber. Yes, cucumbers are quiet. But has the magical conductive liquid caused any damage inside of my machine? That's the real question, because there are warnings all over about how dangerous liquid metal can be. Well, let's find out. Do you know what else is magical? Our sponsor, Setup. Get this, you pay $10 per month and you get access to thousands of dollars of premium and beloved Mac apps. Click the link in the video description to start your free trial today. No credit card required. So as I mentioned previously, both the thermal performance and my perceived longevity of the hardware with liquid metal has been excellent. However, I've become a little nervous in recent weeks because, well, for one, the laptop is not a stationary one, so the liquid metal has more than certainly been jostled about. Though the conformal coating that I applied is supposed to create an invisible barrier between the very conductive metal and sensitive electronics. And I'm also nervous about the fact that liquid metal is highly corrosive to aluminum. Gallium, the main ingredient in liquid metal, can penetrate the porous grain structure of aluminum and it chemically amalgamates. It basically breaks down the strength of the aluminum, as demonstrated to us by our friends at Business Insider. Now, we only applied liquid metal to the CPU die itself and to the thin copper shim, which is attached to the cooler's heat pipe. None of that is aluminum. However, if the liquid metal has spread around a bit, as I suspect it might, it may have come in contact with the cooler mounting assembly, which is aluminum. Y eso no sería bueno. Entonces, I mean, so, it's time to pull this thing apart again and see if there's any damage. First, we've got to shut her down, and then we will flip the laptop upside down undo the rear screws, and then remove the rear cover, which requires that you slide the lid away from the hinge before lifting. Once you get a hang of this thing, it's pretty easy, but holy smokes, the first few times are really hard. Anyways, the rest of the disassembly is actually pretty straightforward, boring, and relatively easy. In fact, it only took me eight minutes and 30 seconds, so I'm pretty proud of myself for that. Now it comes time to actually pull the cooling assembly away from the motherboard. Well, I guess we've got to unscrew the tightening fasteners at the back, but that's boring. Come on, hurry up, let's go, let's go. Okay, now it's time for the moment of truth. And it actually looks pretty great. Well, the die that is, we'll get to the cooler in a second. The liquid metal on the die is just as liquidy as it was when I applied it, which is great because good liquid metal, like the thermal grizzly conductor knot I used, only dries out if it's exposed to direct airflow, which if your cooler is seated properly, it won't be. The liquid also hasn't shifted around at all, which is excellent, and I was probably worried a little bit over nothing. That said, I am a little concerned about the copper cooler shim, because it does not look shiny or wet, certainly not like the dye, and not even as shiny as it was when I applied the gallium directly to it three months ago. It has kind of a soaked-in look. And liquid metal does this, it penetrates every metal, uh, just copper more slowly, but even most of the videos I've seen online show a relatively wet copper surface after several months, and mine, well, it's not. It's not even slightly wet. In fact, it's basically 100% dry, and it's not until I rub the block with a rubbing alcohol dosed rag that I can pick any of the liquid metal up. Now, that would lead me to believe that maybe the cooler shim wasn't making contact with the CPU die, but that also seems pretty highly unlikely given the A, insane mounting pressure that Apple uses on its coolers, B, the excellent temperatures that I've been getting ever since install, and C, the fact that the die is not dried out. Do you have any thoughts? Because I honestly am a little bit perplexed. Regardless, after a rubbing alcohol-infused cleanup, there is visible alloying on top of the CPU die. See how it isn't really shiny anymore? And the CPU cooler, <laughs> well, it still looks super silver. It doesn't even look like I did anything, even after a ton of alcohol rag treatment. Now, this doesn't affect performance in any way, but I still wanted to see if I could remove it, especially because Apple might give me trouble if I ever need to get my keyboard repaired uh, under their new extended replacement program. Thank you for finally admitting fault for crappy design, Apple. <laughs> so I used an ultrasonic cleaner to penetrate the tiny pores of the copper metal. I heated up a solution of rubbing alcohol and simple green, which can be flammable, so don't do it. 
but I did it, and I heated the liquid to nearly 80 degrees Celsius. After 20 minutes of short and long wave treatment, it actually looks significantly better. But the copper does still show signs of liquid metal presence and is overall discolored. Again, doesn't impact performance, but it does look a little goofy. Oh well, it's not that big of a deal. Confession time. While I've liked the idea of having liquid metal inside my laptop, it really only provided an improvement of about 7% over a high quality thermal paste, which is much lower risk and doesn't require annual replacement. So I just decided to settle and put in standard Arctic MX2 instead and not have to worry about it. You'll still get a 7 to 10% improvement from the stock Apple paste job, and you'll save money and stress in the process without any damage to your computer. Do you know what else saves money and stress? Setapp. Okay, these guys are a new sponsor and I'm already a huge fan. For less than $10 a month, you get access to over 120 premium Mac apps. And this isn't like shovelware stuff. These are fantastic Mac apps. Apps like the writing tool Ulysses, which I included in my top five favorite Mac apps video last year, and Bartender, which is a favorite amongst Mac power users and has been for over a decade. You can sign up for a seven day free trial, no credit card required, and the app that you download has a great UI for discovering new apps in every category. Utilities, education, development, creativity, Mac apps, writing, personal finance, etc. Apps take just a second to install, and well, you name the app you want and they probably have something like it. Become one of more than half a million users, including myself, to give Setapp a try for free today. Please do so through the link below and let them know that I sent you. While regular thermal paste may not be as exciting as liquid metal, I'm honestly much more at ease and I will leave the crazy hardware modifications to my stationary desktop tech. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, well, that other button seems to work okay too. Check out my other awesome videos over here and get subscribed to the channel for more excellent videos like these. But most importantly, and as always, thank you for watching and stay snazzy.